Howdy. As you can see, we're starting off on the beach, but we're about to go inland from this beach and have a look at what's living in the nearby creeks. So let's get started. Howdy, we've traveled inland from the Gold Coast up to this remote creek in Springbrook National Park. And we have found some amazing species already. Now this first species that we're looking at is called a long arm shrimp. And these long arm shrimp can get some really long arms on them. As you can see this one, this one has the longest arms of any shrimp I have ever seen. And they're really good at catching things with those long arms, but they usually scavenge and eat leaves and bits of algae from the ground. But they do have the ability to defend themselves really well with those big long claws. Now we're continuing up the creek and we're having a good look in all the pools to try and find what's living in this creek. Seeing that shrimp to begin with, it was a really promising find. And it's pretty treacherous walking up these creeks. As you can see, you gotta keep a real steady footing so you don't fall over. And I'm testing out something called a life straw to see if I get sick from drinking the creek water. And we're about to see something a bit later that I really hope this filter works to get rid of. It's full of these blue berries that fall down from these trees above us. And where these berries have been falling, there's a deep pool of water full of these native fish called gudgeons. Let's take a look at some of these amazing creatures. And there we go. Now these aren't your regular gudgeons. These amazing creatures are called Cox's gudgeons. And they're a species of sleeper goby. These fish are found all along the east coast of Australia from Queensland to Victoria. Cox's gudgeons eat insects and are especially good at eating mosquito fish, which are an introduced species that take over our waterways all around Australia. So it's good to know these natives are especially good at eating them. These guys can be found up to 700 metres above sea level, and the adults have the ability to climb up waterfalls by rotating their pectoral fins on their belly to create a suction on the surface they want to climb up. They've been observed climbing up the walls of a dam, which are very steep indeed. When it comes time for breeding season, the female will lay her eggs on a rocky surface. Then the male will come along, fertilize them, and he will take over the role of caring for the eggs until they hatch. He's not gonna let any other fish near those eggs, including mum. It's believed the babies get washed downstream during the rainy season, but when the creeks are flowing really fast, they make their way back up when they're older using their fins to create suction onto a surface and then climb up any obstacle in their way. They can grow up to 20 centimetres in ideal conditions but are closer to 10 centimetres. Look at that amazing camouflage pattern. It takes a while before you can see one of these gudgeons. You have to be looking quite hard and sometimes you only notice them when they move. There's also spiders. Here's one species of spider waiting by the water's edge and he's going to attack whatever comes in front of him and there he goes. He got that little insect. Wow. What an incredible predator. What a menacing predator. Oh, those spiders are creepy. And you can see a big one. Look how well camouflaged he is behind that smaller one in front. You can see why they're so hard to detect. They're basically the same colours that you find on these rocks in the creeks that they inhabit. They also have these bright orange and blue fins on their belly, which really stand out in their breeding season. Yeah, the, the male... They're such good predators. 
Nothing in the creek can tell where they are because of how well camouflaged they are. Not even me. And I was really good at looking for these fish. It wasn't until looking back at the footage that I realised how many of them there actually were. Look how still they're able to stay. And those beautiful pectoral fins under them. They're such a nice light blue colour. And those are the fins that they use to suction onto a surface to climb up when they want to migrate up the river. There's a lot of shrimp in this river, which these gudgeons no doubt eat. But there was no other fish. And here's my guide. He's going to have a good look on the other side of the creek. And you can see this menacing looking worm. This is called a horsehair worm, and this is an adult. When they're an adult, they try to hunker onto a rock, and then they're gonna lay their eggs. And they lay millions of eggs in this creek, and their eggs will turn into little evil parasites that infect shrimp and insects. And the insects will come down and get a drink, and then the parasite will get into their body and take over their abdomen. And then when their life cycle's ready to complete, they'll return back to the river and they'll burst out of the shrimp or insect they were living in and then they'll turn into this big long worm and then they'll hunker down to a rock and start the process all over again. Thankfully they don't infect humans, at least that's what I've been told and I really hope that that filter I was using filters them out. Some menacing spikes on that plant. So we continued up the creek, and you'll never guess what we found. Hey, look at this. There's some old wagon drive shaft. No, axle. Where the wheels go? That's right. That wheel was from a sawmill that's nearby. We didn't actually know that there was a sawmill there until later. So we didn't get a look at it. And here's a native lizard, and he's lost his tail, but that doesn't matter because he's going to regrow his tail in a few months' time. That's an amazing ability these lizards have. Another water spider waiting for some insects to hunt. Just laying and waiting until an insect comes along, then bam, he's going to get him. What a beautiful yet terrifying spider. They give me the creeps. But they're an important part of the waterways. They help to keep the insects under control. And they, are, they have no interest in humans at all. So you're fine with those little water spiders as long as you keep out of their way. However, they will bite you if you get in their way. So it's best to leave them alone because that will hurt. I almost put my hand on it. And here's this beautiful Australian moth living on the side of a tree. And as I said, I was walking up the bank and I put my arm on this branch that had fallen over and I was so close to touching him, but he stayed so still because he thought he was really well camouflaged. But what an amazing pattern that creature has. You can see this tree has fallen over the creek. I think they look amazing when a creek has a tree that's fallen over it. I think it's a really beautiful sight to behold. Wow, what an incredible forest.
This was one magical place. We had such a fun time exploring. Those seas fall down quite randomly and it's quite scary hearing them land right next to you. This is so much like Jurassic Park. You can very easily imagine one of those dinosaurs just appearing down here for a drink. It sure is like Jurassic Park, but this forest isn't actually that old. Most of it was cut down in the 18 and 1900s by people trying to make money off the, the trees that have spent hundreds if not thousands of years growing in the same spot and they cut them down so they could sell them to make money. Oh my God. No and here's another one of those spiders. They've got little hairs on their legs that they use to keep the surface tension on the water and support them as they scoot along to try and catch insects. If you were to put some dish soap or some oil on the water, it would break the surface tension and these spiders would drown. So it's really important to keep these waterways clear of any oils and detergents. Any sort of contaminants can ruin the waterway and creatures like that spider won't be able to swim and won't be able to keep the insects under control. And we saw something move in this pool but we only got a glimpse at it before it darted under those leaves. It just gets more and more amazing up this creek. We've reached the halfway point now in our journey and it's time for us to start heading back. So we had to turn around and head back. It's really promising to only see natives in the creek. We've been really lucky so far. We had a good look in every pool on the way back as well, but we didn't find anywhere near as many gudgeons. However, we did find some bees getting a drink. What lovely creatures. We just got really lucky with that first pool. There were a few gudgeons along the way, but nowhere near as many as we found in that first pool we came to. And I saw this spider running along the path and then he darted away and I had a look under some leaves and there he was, camouflaged with a leaf. So you do not want to be touching these leaves while you're in the forest because a spider could easily hide under them. Well, that's it from us. We hope you enjoyed the journey learning about these amazing underwater species.